five seconds. Sir, I rise to support the bill as it has emerged from the joint committee. But while doing so, I wish to make some observations generally and also in respect of certain clauses. The objects of the bill as originally introduced have been enumerated like this that a litigant should get a fair trial in accordance with the accepted principles of natural justice. Every effort should be made to expedite the disposal of civil suits and proceedings so that justice may not be delayed. The procedure should not be complicated and should to the utmost extent possible ensure fair deal to the poorer sections of the community who do not have the means to engage a pleader to defend their cases. I wonder whether any of these three objectives will be achieved by this bill. Let us not flatter ourselves that this amending bill as it has emerged from the joint committee will be able to achieve any of these objects. The code of civil procedure is a complicated thing. It was framed in 1908. We have streamlined it here and there. We have removed some hardship here and there and codified some of the legal decisions and we have removed certain conflicts in decisions but that does not mean that the litigant is able to get speedy justice or justice at less expense. Let us be clear about it. I do not blame anybody but by the civil procedure as it stands none of these objects can be achieved. I am glad that some of the provisions which have been introduced are really good. They have removed the doubts and conflicts in respect of judicial decisions which had prevailed. Each high court giving a different decision about a particular matter that has now been set at rest. For instance, in section 11, there was a conflict of judicial decision, whether the decision of a court with limited jurisdiction can operate in subsequent proceeding between the same parties in a higher court. There was a conflict of decisions and now it is set at rest by saying that the decision of the lower court with limited jurisdiction will operate in a subsequent suit between the same parties in a court with higher jurisdiction. Secondly, it is also made clear that principle applies to execution proceedings also, I would like to say that it is good improvement. 
Section 60 of the original Act has been amended which has given greater concessions to the judgment debt from arrest and also from attachment of his salary. That will relieve some hardships. The Law Commission in its two reports have recommended the deletion of this section. The bill as originally introduced also deleted that section but the committee in its wisdom found that the notice should be there so that cases which are genuine might be settled out of court by the government so that unnecessary expenditure need not be incurred by the litigant and also the litigant need not undergo unnecessary expenses and worry. But this section which is being resorted should not be understood in favor of the government but the government should deem it a duty to see that whenever a notice under section 80 is received it should examine the claim of the aggrieved citizen and see that it is settled if it is genuine so that litigation could be avoided otherwise the government or the government officers never bothered to look into the notice the litigant is at a loss and he has to go to the court the purpose was not being served now i hope with this amendment the litigant will not be driven to the court to file a suit in cases of course where the government feel that the claim is genuine it could be settled and avoid the litigant from going to the court about section 100 which speaks of second appeals they have introduced the words substantial question of law the wording earlier was on a question of law a second appeal lie that is the wording under the existing section 100 of civil procedure code but they have now put the words a substantial question of law a substantial question of law should be involved for a second appeal what does it mean suppose the decision of a suit depends on a question of limitation where the plaintiff files a suit and the defendant contests the suit as bared by time is it a substantial question of law or is it only a technical question of law if the letter is upheld the appeal fails therefore i cannot understand why on a substantial question of law have been introduced in section 100 i think really it is taken out of the constitution where it is said substantial question of law involving the interpretation of the constitution i believe that any question of law which has the effect of deciding the result of the case should be considered as a substantial question of law stop